It's a good day to be at church, isn't it? Not only at church, but with the church and as part of the church. Amen. So good. So we're going to, uh, I'm Pastor Nate, get to be uh, wrapping up a series this morning. I think it's going to really bless me. <laughs> um, and I, so I think it'll really bless you as well. Um, I love that uh, I get to eat what I cook, uh, or what the Lord is cooking. And, uh, and so this morning, we're going to actually uh, be closing out a series about the love of God. You know, we've been in Ephesians uh, where Paul prayed that we would know the love of God. And um, that we wouldn't just know it just a little bit, that we would know how big, how wide, how deep this love that surpasses knowledge. Um, it, it's, it's something that you, can, you and I can only know uh, by experience. And so um, I, I want to go to a few different uh, 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 scriptures this morning to, to build this case. But la, uh, not last week or the week before because we had a little bit of interruption uh, in a sense. We had family Thanksgiving last week. Wasn't that awesome? That was so awesome. And then, uh, and then the week before that we had Brother Joe morning and evening. That was awesome. And, but the week before that uh, in, in this series we talked about shameless, the love of God and how the love of God, uh, it's shameless. It doesn't hold you in yesterday. Matter of fact, it speaks the end from the beginning and in the middle. You know, sometimes we're we're in that place of doing something again, and all we can see is, you know, uh, what's happened. And the Lord still calls the end from the beginning. And uh, it's the same is true. uh, The ultimate goal today is, the title of this morning's message is this, shameless. Shameless part two, uh, but here's the title of it, it's because uh, it is both pieces, bringing love, bringing love. And I want to, uh, this, uh, this, this thought to, to permeate everything we talk about today, um, as we read in, in Philipp, or not Philippians, but Ephesians chapter three, he says that you would, would know, uh, that you would know the love of Christ. He says, how deep, how wide, that you would know. That word is, the, is a word that describes Intimacy. To know, in other words, it would be something that would be the same as if you were married, and that 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 first night you get to know your spouse, right? Uh, what was it's like? There's no there's no more limits. There's uh, in a sense the the clothes can come off, the the barriers can come off, and I'm I, and I'm not just talking about um, about uh, sex. I'm talking about just the intimacy that is you're to get. There's no there's no barriers, right? And so, um, and I was thinking about that again, bringing love. Uh, and as we come in this holiday season, you're gonna, there's going to be a whole lot of, I don't know if you ever had a family get together and you bring the one you know. You know, how many of you have ever had it where somebody in the family uh, brings their girlfriend or brings their brand new, maybe you haven't met them yet, they bring their spouse and you go, and to go, oh, who's this? You know, and, and you introduce, you, you bring that person. Well, uh, he says this, that he wants us to know or to have uh, the love of God as one that you and I can bring with us everywhere. To know, like, we would bring this to Thanksgiving. We'd bring this to our home. We'd bring this to the relationship. We'd bring this to our work meeting. We'd bring the love of God. To bring the love of God. This holiday season, when you and I go this week to family, I want us to think about shameless, okay? You know, the interesting thing about shame, uh, shame is, is something that we, we um, sometimes receive, sometimes hold ourselves, but it's also sometimes the thing that we're holding others. Shame on you. You ever been there? You ever said that? You ever thought that? How, do you, how does shame, how does shame uh, find, it, find its grip? I'll tell you this. We'll get to this in a minute. Uh, we'll look at scripture, but it's, it starts like this, counting. That's how it starts. Counting. Aren't you thankful that God uh, tells us that love doesn't count a suffered wrong? That love doesn't count. Wow. So, so we're talking about shameless and bringing love. If you're gonna, you and I are going to bring love, you know, we're going to we're gonna have to get the eraser, how God, he didn't count men's trespasses against us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. But instead, he removed them as far as the east is from the west. So you know there's a, that's the love of God. And so the love of God, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 5, it's been shed abroad in your heart. So there is an eraser on the inside. If you and I are willing to yield to the love of God that doesn't count, and it's able to remove that suffered wrong as a child, the way your dad talked to you, the way your dad didn't talk to you, the way your son uh, or your, your mom talked to you, the way your mom didn't talk to you, the way when they did that, when they didn't do that, how they 
what they should have done, what they could have done. Isn't it interesting how we could go through a hundred different scenarios, but there's always something. There's always a mark. You know, anybody ever play Pictionary? You know, guys versus girls. You know, it's like usually like guys, you got a bunch of these lines across, you know. And then the girls, you know, you get that mark. You know, you girls, when you get really excited, you get that little mark, you know. You won one. Yay. I love playing Pictionary, guys versus girls. It's a pastime. It's just like if you love winning, you love playing Pictionary if you're a guy. So, um, <laughs> and I love giving a hard time to the girls, even when they like to think that they got more marks, you know, because even if they have more marks, I'm winning. So, um, just so fun uh, to have. But th- there's a mark, you know. You, you, you know, when you play these games, you get a mark, and you start counting, and you start counting. What, is it, what does the sin mean? To miss the mark. So, in other words, there's a, there's a line. If someone sinned against you, what does it look like? Check. Yeah, well, remember when Lance didn't say hi to me? Remember when they did this to me? Remember when they questioned my integrity? Remember when they thought I stole from them? They accused me of stealing from them. I took their DeWalt drill. I never take their DeWalt drill. You've known me for 15 years. You're going to think I stole your drill from you? And all of a sudden, there's a schism from a friend for 15 years because the drill turned up missing and only to find out uh, it was under your back seat. But, I mean, I'm sorry. Too late. I think, I, I think that somehow the love of God that's been shed abroad in our hearts, we gotta, we got to take another look at this love. Right? The love of God that, what is the love of God? The love of God that um, removes transgression as far as the east is from the west. Again, I'm going to go back there, Romans 5, 5. And this love, the love of God, has been shed abroad in your hearts. That means it's all over. So if we'll learn to draw from here, from our hearts, kind of like sounds like Proverbs 3, verse 5, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own. So if we'll learn to draw from our heart in the eyes of our heart instead of the eyes in our head, what we'll see is we'll see, we'll see, um, well, we'll see love. We'll see love in a place. And I'll say it this way. Uh, it, it, love is, um, it, it's not just an action. It really is. Uh, if you were to go to this verse, it says that God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love. So love is not just a thing. It's actually, it permeates. It's kind of like, the smell of Thanksgiving, right? You know, like, or, or, or El Trio or L- Subway. It was probably my, the most famous. If you go into Subway and you get back that shirt, I don't know what it is about that Subway, your, your clo- it, it, it's, it permeates. And that's the way love is. Love is spiritual. And so when love is present, you can sense it. You can sense uh, the same way that when you come into Thanksgiving, you can also, or a Christmas gathering, you can sense if somebody's still holding on to uh, your interactions from last year, five years ago, ten years ago. You can sense it. Even though you get the high, high five, hug, smile, or like, hey man, can you sense it? It may not be like you're in the, in, the, in the restaurant, but there's the residue. Anybody have some residue that they're not looking forward to smelling this year? Anybody a residue holder? You know, holding somebody else's residue? You know, counting and keeping? Anybody got some score for some friends? Well, guess what? The love of God has given you and I this, this eraser. The love of God can erase the sin. The the love of God can erase the mark that somebody else cut you. I'm not the only one that's been cut. I'm not the only one that's cut. The Bible says it's impossible that offenses don't come. They're going to come. There's going to be a missed mark. You're going to miss it. I'm going to miss it. We're going to miss it. 
So we're going to have to learn how to deal with the misses or to deal with the marks. And the only way to deal with the marks is this thing called love. Not just this, this thing. It is actually something that, go, that, that, that who God is. And so if you and I would walk with him and walk in this love, it, 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 you will be amazed at what comes from, if we'll walk in the spirit of love, we'll find that, it, that there's a spirit of life and peace. You, this is what you and I will find, a, a spirit of life and peace. There'll be a drawing down. This is what that word, and we'll get to the, here in, in this verse that I'm referring to, but it means drawing down, not just life, but a drawing down from or a drawing from a source, the same way that roots would draw from a source. That plant is alive, not because of what you see, but because there's something greater that it, 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 it's drawing from. It's not just drawing from roots either. Sometimes we think it's only drawing from roots. How many of you know that these plants are drawing from sunlight? How many of you know that the plants are drawing from the oxygen in the air, right? There's a, or rather, they produce oxygen, okay? But you understand what I'm saying. They're, they're, drawing, uh, they're drawing from so many. There's something you and I can draw from. It's the love of God. So here we are. Let's go ahead and... Uh, and this is what I wanted to kind of lay that out this morning because we're just going to take some steps. We're going to take some steps to erase the mark within. And for us, that's been on our heart, like, but also like to erase the mark that we've held on somebody else. You know what I mean? So it's, it's kind of twofold. Because shame, you don't have to be ashamed uh, unless, unless, unless you receive it. You can walk free of shame. I, I, I'll tell you, one of the hardest things ever uh, in my life was dealing with shame. Uh, and, and I'll give you a, I'll give you a, 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 pretty, a pretty big uh, semi-transparency. How's that? Pretty transparent, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm probably transparent to a fault a lot of times um, up here, but, and I feel like I should be this transparent. So... Um, as past pastoring, probably probably eight or nine years ago, I don't know, maybe I don't even know the date. Okay, um, everything in with my within my heart, I made a decision, um, and uh, and talked to to the board to get the right decision, and and I I made a decision, uh, and I I felt like I handled it right, I felt like uh, it was it was pure everything within me, but it didn't come off that way. You ever had, you ever tried to do something for somebody? You try to say something, uh, it didn't come off that way? I remember one time I gave my mom a card that was a funny, but it should have been an honoring moment. I didn't think of it as that, but I was a, but I thought it was really funny and my mom's feelings were hurt. So it came off wrong. I wasn't trying to be mean, but my mom felt like it was a time of honor and instead I was making fun. So it came off wrong, even though I tried right. So sometimes it's not even what you came off. Your heart was pure, but you could have missed it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Because yes. you didn't realize that the moment was calling for something else. Yes. Okay, so I'm not the only one. All right, good. Uh, and so in this moment, what what happened? Um, uh, it, it ended up going through uh, throughout um, uh, family and friends based on a decision that I made, and uh, relationships that I've had for years. Um, it was like there, I could feel a whisper. You know what I'm talking about? Like you ever had that? And so the point that um, when I would go into the community, though, I, though in my heart I did everything uh, to seek the Lord, to make a decision, and to, to try to be helpful um, on my side, though it might have come off a different way, um, the whispers or the, perce the perception of that, uh, though I felt like I had nothing to be ashamed of, I couldn't lift my head. I didn't want to be in Alma. I didn't want to be in a community where I knew people. I, I wished I could just go back to painting. Where it was easy because I did a job and people liked what I did. And I got paid for that. And I got paid more for that. And now I'm dealing with this. And I thought. And going in, it probably took me two to two and a half years just to go, be able to go to a ball game again and not walk around with my eyes. Anybody ever been there where your eyes are looking down? 
Because you're ashamed. You're ashamed that others are shaming. And so you must have done... And so you can't get free, and, and, and just this Sunday, and I'm talking about shame because I was in shame, and then on Sunday, I witnessed shame. This past Sunday on Family Thanksgiving, I witnessed shame. I said this to my wife on the way home. I said, one of the greatest things you'll ever see is when shame is lifted off someone. Yes. One of the most powerful moments, and in baptism, you know, you know sometimes you're baptizing people, and it's, it's just an awesome testimony, but other times, like, Shame is lifted because the old is gone and the new has come. And it's like so powerful when shame is lifted. It's like, thank you, God. Like it just, I remember just, just this weekend, just there was a couple of times it just felt I could feel the lift. You know, the crazy thing is shame is so heavy, but you can't measure it. But yet it's, it, it's crippling. It's, it, it, causes, it causes weakness in our bodies. It actually affects our bodies, our joints, our, our, our health, shame. And I thought, man, I saw shame lift. Because of what? Because the old was gone. And the new had come. That's what happened. There was an identifying of a death, burial, and a raise to life. The magic eraser. The love of God. The brand new. This is the good news of the gospel. This is the love of God. That the old is gone, the new has come. When we think about Paul, and I'm giving you, I'm, I'm walking through the, a lot of scriptures this morning that are in my notes, and that, uh, and we might get to the actual reference. But you, when you think about Paul, who was once Saul, <laughs> isn't that cool? Who was once Saul? When you think about Paul. Who does, he's Paul. When you think about uh, uh, Simon, who is shifty reed, now he is Peter, which is the rock. It's a little different, isn't it? Shaky weed that blows in versus rock. Or, or how God changed, you'll no longer be Saul, but you'll be Paul. You know, when you think about Paul, the one that writes that I, I, I have been crucified in Christ, but no longer it is I that live, but it's Christ who lives within me. That's what he says. It's not I. It, it, I've been crucified. How many of you know that when Paul said, I've been crucified with Christ, what he was saying is Saul has been crucified with Christ. Saul has been crucified with Christ. We go back to the, the old is gone and the new has come. You think Saul, having murdered Jesus, those who were following Jesus, and the Lord appeared to him on the road, and he said, why, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Do you think that that could have stuck with him a moment? Do you think his mess up, could, though it was in could have stuck with him a moment? You better believe it. And so this is why when Paul talks about how the old is gone and the new has come, if any man be in Christ, do you know he was talking about himself? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Paul. Chosen by God. Paul, an apostle by the will of God. Paul, an apostle by the will of God. You'll find that he starts his letters this way. I, Paul. Not so. I, so he had to identify with who Christ identified him. So I am the righteousness of God in, in Christ Jesus. There's just, the Bible talks about if any man is in Christ, the righteousness of God in Christ. So I am. You and I have to identify with the way that Christ has identified him. Okay, I'm preaching this morning. We need to go through some scriptures and lay them out. Dalton, is this thing working? Because I haven't seen anything. I know I've been talking, but I haven't given you references, so that's probably why. All right. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure because I thought, or like one of them I thought was maybe hit at the very beginning or even the background for the graphic. Um, but it might be back here. All right. Okay, so let's just go to Ephesians chapter 3. Um, and this is a prayer, uh, 14, and this is something we can pray over our kids, we can pray over ourselves, we can pray over our families. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and earth drives its name. I ask that out of the riches of his glory, that he might strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. So he's talking about there's a place to draw from. We're talking about the love of God. We're not talking about yielding to this love is a, is a mind over matter thing. We're, we're talking about where we draw from. You ever, you ever have a savings account 
and then a bank account, and one might have no money in it, and the other one might have some money in it, and, and you can get money out. You just got to know where you got to draw it from. Because it's, it's, let me say it this way, it still it has your name. It's still owned by you, whether or not it was in this account or that. We just got to know what account we need to draw from. So there is a, a place that we can draw from, and he says, that in your inner being. Where has the love of God, according to Romans 5.5, 5, been shed abroad? In your heart. So you can draw from something different than what this here thinks and different than where these eyes see, right? Okay. So that Christ, being, that Christ might dwell in your hearts through faith. Then you being rooted, again, rooted. This is, this is really powerful words here. Then you being rooted and grounded in love. So rooted, what is rooted? Drawing strength and life from. But also rooted and grounded. What it would be grounded would be stability. How about, think about the stability of love. Like, like love, when you, when you, it doesn't get knocked over. That your life in a moment because of the love of God, no matter the conditions, because of the covenant that you and I have, we don't have to be tossed to and fro by every storm. Because God loves me. Well, it kind of reminds me, of, I don't, you don't have this scripture, but uh, it says, so what can separate us from the love of God? This is, this is in Romans. I think it's the end of Romans 8, I think. I think. Uh, but it says, what can separate us from the love of God? Can death or life or can peril, can this? What should we say? No, in all these things, we're more than conquerors through him that, oh. So the love of God, no matter what's going on, no matter what break you get, no matter what break you didn't get, no matter what someone said, no matter what someone didn't say, the love of God doesn't change. And so because the love of God doesn't change, I'm grounded. I'm grounded not because of what's going on on the outside, but because of the love of God that's been shed on the inside. And so I draw from this love, and this love is where, it's, it's where I make my move. You ever, you ever make a move not in love? You ever make a, make a move because you're not in love and you said you're, you'd love to do something else? <laughs> Maybe you hurt somebody, you make a move not in love. But being rooted and grounded in love. This is a prayer. Lord, show me. Father, strengthen me from anything. Let, let me draw from this place in your love. Let me draw from being rooted. Let me draw from your love. I, I, Lord, I, just, I, I choose to draw from your love today. Thank you for your love for me. That, grounded in love. We'll have power together with all the saints to comprehend the length, the width, the height, and depth of the love of Christ. And to know. This is that word bringing love with you, to know, someone, that you, someone intimate. To know this love that surpasses knowledge and that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So when you're filled with love, what does he say? You can be filled with all the fullness of, love, fullness of God. It goes on to say, uh, now to him is able to do measurably more than you ask, could think, or imagine. What is it according to the power that's at work within you? Well, this is the love of God is the power that's at work within you. God, God is, when the love of God, when you and I are yielded to love, you and I are yielded to God, and it, there is nothing in too hard for him. This is where we're at. Talking about, again, bringing love to, the, to, mar, to your tomorrow. Bringing love in, into today. So here, we, um, filled with the fullness of God. So uh, let's, let's, let's cruise down here. The, the whole goal uh, uh, of today really is this, is bringing love into, each, into, into tomorrow, bringing love and being shameless. And, uh, and, and because I'm shameless, I'm, I'm not shameful. I don't, I don't shame others either. I don't, and I'm not foolish. I don't receive it. I don't give it, right? Um, let's go here. Let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 1 through 6. Therefore, there is now, when is there no condemnation? Yeah, but you don't know what I did. Just when, when did you do that? Well, just, just a second ago. Yeah, but guess what? There is. This is r radical thinking to think this way. But, but you got to understand that God sees outside of time. And so he's up here. We're in this dispensation called time which God is dealing with man, and he sees the, so if you could imagine this timeline, God's outside, and he sees the end, 
or I guess we could go this way for your, the end from the beginning. So, so from up here, he's like, I see here and I see here, and uh, they're not going to make it. <laughs> they're not going to make it, so here's what I'm going to do. I am going to show them that they can't make it, and, uh, but I'm going to give them a choice whether or not they want to receive my help or not. And, uh, and so I'm going to show them what they can't live up to, my ho- holiness. And, uh, but I'm going to make a way to live up to that holiness because only I could live up to that holiness. I'm going to send my son Jesus uh, that if any man would believe in him, you know, it's not by works, prove that to them that any man should boast, but it's a free gift by my grace that I'll, I'll, I'll pay for their sins, past, present, and future, and I'll let my righteousness be conferred to them. All this is happening out here. And so that means their sins, past, present, and future, because I dealt with uh, the end from the beginning. Nice. So, so now, right now, where God exists outside of time, now there is no condemnation for you. See, because what keeps you and I from coming to the throne of grace is that very thing, condemnation. What keeps you, what, 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 what kills people's calls and destinies is condemnation. See, the thing about it is, is condemnation is, is a judgment. But God is the judge. But yet sometimes we find ourselves as the judge. We're going to get to that and we're going to see how, how, how important it is for God to be judge and us not. Again, we're talking about bringing shame tomorrow to, to your tomorrow or to your family outing or to, your, to whatever it might be. Shame instead of the love of God. Let's bring the love of God. Let's, let's allow the, the now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. First, uh, Romans chapter 8. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. I, I just love that. The law that says uh, sin, meaning you miss the mark. And if you miss the mark, then you get it's just all about what you hit or don't, you don't hit. It's, it's like, you know, make one shot and win the big teddy bear. The ball doesn't go in the hoop. But if you make it, and, and we have this mentality, so, so we, we live in lives where you earn everything based on your performance, based on your goals, based upon how many sales, based upon... You know, uh, bringing in this much, whatever it might be, based on how far you throw the ball, how far you kick the ball, how hard you hit the ball. Everything's based on what you did, except for outside the way Jesus works, the way the Lord works. He says, not based on your works, it's based on my works. If you'll re- just receive my works, yeah, but I don't know if I can receive. You can, it's a choice. Let's keep going here. So um, for what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement in the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. What you're going to find in this next passage here, Romans 8, he talks about living according to the flesh or according to the spirit and the word according to or word, again it doesn't translate straight from greek but he, the word that you see according to we draw down from or we draw from the flesh or we draw from the spirit it doesn't mean you draw down from it just means you're pulling from either the flesh what you see the natural man or you can draw from the spirit or the things of god so where are we going to draw today so you and i if we're going to draw condemnation it's cuz we're drawing from the flesh we're drawing from what we see or what we've heard or what somebody did. But yet the Bible says, and we'll get here in a moment, but he says, we no longer are to regard people according to the flesh. We once did even Christ this way, now no longer. Once they thought Christ, just according to the flesh, is just a man that was going to be a savior to rid them of Roman tyranny. But then they saw, not just naturally, they saw him as the son of God. Okay? So he says, those who live according to the flesh, how do you know if you're living according to the flesh? It's where you set your mind. So uh, in in, in, uh, doing some study for for this this upcoming series, I found myself in Romans 8, and I found myself looking at some commentaries. And I love one of this, the, the, the trying to describe mindset, 
It's one word, but this, the, it's hard to describe because it combines two. two and so this is in the, uh, in the Strong's Concordance. It, it, it says this. It says, this idea, mindset, is difficult to translate into English because it, it combines the visceral and the cognitive aspects of thinking. What does that mean? It invi- mindset involves the natural thinking and the heart thinking. So it takes the heart and the mind. So because you received a word in the heart, now you're going to think it this way. So if I, if I look at you, Joe, and I'm talking to this right here, and you think in your heart that what I'm saying is directed to you, it doesn't matter what I say because in here is you've made up, there's, there's something here and now it's here. So I can't convince here to eradicate here. I can't convince here to eradicate here. This is why the Bible says in Proverbs, it says an offended brother is harder to win back than a strong city. Because so many times what you're trying to do, what we're trying to do is we're trying to appeal to their mind about this, 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 this. And what we need to be talking is here, right here. So Father, thank you for the love of God that has been shed abroad in my heart. Thank you for the love of God. I I pray that the love of God, that they would know the love of God. Because I can't erase, I can't convince the heart, I can only talk to the head. But where their mind is set, they made up their mind. Yeah. It's because something got in here. Anytime, anybody ever have something get in here? And it doesn't matter what they do out here? It's over. No. 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 Is there anything too hard for the Lord? But you're right, it is over. If you're going to draw from the flesh. But if you draw from the Spirit. See, those who live, verse 5, those who live according to or draw down from the flesh have their mind set. It's the combining of both your mind and your heart. They have their mind set uh, on what the flesh desires. But those who live according to or in accordance to, uh, with the Spirit have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. Or the word desires is, that's NIV, it doesn't say it's either to have their mind set on the flesh or have their mind set on the Spirit. So where you set your mind, what you draw from, right? He said, again, those who live, if you're going to get experience life uh, according to the flesh, you're gonna, it's because you're thinking here and here according to what these eyes are producing, what you heard with these ears. Or what, you're, what you saw with these eyes or heard with these ears, your mind, what you received here and you think now here is because you heard it or you've seen it or you felt it or experienced it. But he said you can, you can live or experience life if you'll set this right here. Right? If what you'll receive a spirit word, you'll receive a God, God's, you'll receive God's love and you'll say, wait a minute, I'm going to think here based on what I have allowed to also rest here. And this is why it's so important for us to realize that the love of God, why, where did he put the love of God? He should, he could put it on a plate. He said, he come eat of it anytime. He could have put it, you know, I don't know, anywhere, but where did he put it? He put it here. So you could draw from here and draw from something that was deposited here and make your mind up here. And then you, then it doesn't matter what happens on the outside or how somebody cuts you because what you have on here, no matter how someone convinces you to hate them or to, 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 they've done you wrong and done you wrong and done you wrong and talked to you in some dirty way, you, you don't have to choose because you have your mindset. You know, you, have, you can have a mindset to love somebody no matter how they treat you. They can't change you. You, they can't change you. In the same way that you couldn't, you, if you're trying to win somebody over, you can't change them. But the same way the love of God, you, the love of God is amazing. Thank you, Lord. So it says the mind, uh, this is um, verse 6. But the mind governed by the flesh is death. So I, you just think about death for a moment. What, what is death? Separation from life? Um, Death. Uh, this, l- listen to the way that somebody described death. Separation from life or salvation of God, forever dying without experiencing death to self to receive his gift of salvation. So it's death, 
forever dying without first experiencing death to self to receive salvation. So you know what? This is what's so powerful when in the Paul was talking about that you, he said, I am crucified with Christ, yet nevertheless I live. And so he's saying death here, what he's referring to is that you have death forever, not just death to self. How many of you know, this is what happens when we, we, we were to die to self. When we receive Christ, he says, it's not I that live, it's Christ who lives within me. Maybe you've heard this preach, we maybe should preach it more often. It says, pick up your cross and follow me. In other words, uh, in other words, that we have this understanding that we were crucified with Christ. It's not just believing in Christ, that he died for us, but that we, are, we were death, identifying with Christ is a death, burial, and resurrection. So I have died. This man, this natural man, this, the, the flesh side of me, I, I put to death. If I'm going to live according to this. So this is like what Pastor Evan was talking about this morning. Uh, when, when, when there's a word spoken, that he's like, like kind of like you look at where Jesus, he's, he's tempted in the wilderness. He had to answer the temptation. He had to answer the flesh fight. With what? Spirit words. And guess what? He walked out a victor. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Uh, for those who are led by this, uh, let's keep on. So the uh, mind governed by the flesh, verse 6, is death. But the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. So how do you know if your mindset is one by the spirit or one by the flesh? Well, you're either experiencing, and what you see is death, lack, shortened, or you see life. In peace. So th- this is really, really simple. But you know what? You and I can choose where we're going to yield. Tell me about that family relationship that's gone wrong. Is it ever going to be right? Well, it depends on where you're drawn from. And then if you're drawn from the right place, you can call the end from the beginning. And the end can be what you call it instead of where you're at in the middle. According to the word of God, this is how the Bible tells us that the just are to live by or experience faith or experience life by faith. Now, the just shall live by faith. God wants your and my life to be shaped by not a circumstance, but a word of God. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. My life, uh, uh, someone who is justified in Christ, who, who has a covenant with God, he said, I don't want the conditions of this world. Because there's going to be storms. There's going to be trials. There's going to be tribulations. They're going to come. But I don't want the conditions of your life to be governed by what happens out here. I want what the conditions of your life to be governed by my words. The just shall live by faith. So you can have life and you can have it more abundantly. This is why Lord, the Jesus came, wrote, uh, John 10. He said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. If Jesus had it made a, a way to make us righteous, we could not have the life. We'd have no covenant. We'd have no words. That's what a covenant was. It was exchange of his words to, to us. We'd have nothing to draw on to where we could experience life and life more abundantly. The just shall live by faith. Not by conditions. Not by a past. Not by what somebody did or didn't do. Because guess what? The love of God didn't change and it's shed abroad in your heart and you can draw from that. And if you'll draw from and set your mind on the things of the Spirit, you can draw life and peace. Let me say it this way. When I mean draw life and peace, I'm thinking, I want you to think of a bucket in a well. And when we say draw life and peace, you can draw and you can pull up that bucket and in that bucket, pour it out into your life, filled up is life and peace. It's not magical. It's not mystical. It's not um, imaginative. Like, oh, I got this air bucket of life and peace. We're baking a cake. Let's have tea. (laughs) This is real, just because you can't see it, it's real substance that you and I, when we draw from, we draw from the Spirit and, and pour into our lives a supply of heaven. In the same way, if you fix your eyes On the things of the natural, of flesh, you can draw from a place and take a bucket filled with death. And I'm not just talking about like skull bones, like, oh, but I'm talking about 
shortened span. Death as in uh, not, not uh, running out. You can pour into your life just a running out of friendships, a running out of money, a running out of health, a running out of everything. It just This is where fear, death, it's, it's right there. Pour it out. Where are you going to draw from? Right here? Or are you going to draw from the Spirit? From the love of God that's been placed on the inside of you. So let's talk about today drawing from the place or the well of God's love. God's love for you and God's love for others. For those who are led by the Spirit of God, they're the children of God. Verse 14 says that. Verse 15, the Spirit uh, you receive does not make you slaves so that you would fear again, but rather the Spirit you received uh, brought about an adoption to sonship. And he says, that's where we cry, Abba, Father. He, uh, let's go on to verse 16. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we're children of God. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, and heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. And here's something that you might write down. Heirs don't earn. Heirs don't earn. All that I, we can go to Luke chapter, uh, I think it's 15. Uh, I'm, I'm going through a lot of verses this morning in my mind, but it's the, pro, the prodigal son. It might be Luke 10. I'm, I, no, Luke 15. And he, the prodigal son, all that I have in the house is yours. He didn't say you had to earn it. He said, I've worked, I've worked, I've worked. This is the lost son, not the one that was found. It was the lost son and the found son. So <laughs> I think the lost one was still in the house. I've worked and worked and worked all these years. He said, and the father said, son, everything that I have is yours. So, so uh, an heir doesn't earn. And as long as an heir thinks he has to earn, he will not be able to draw from what God has made available to him. That father loved that son. But he didn't know it. He didn't know it. So he didn't draw from the love of the father. He was drawing from his wages, and he hadn't worked hard enough to ask his dad to get that calf. Because if he had worked hard enough, he would have asked. Because he said, well, you haven't not once gave me. See, he was still seeing that it was going to have to be a gift from his dad, because he hadn't, that was, a lot, that was worth a lot. And I haven't quite earned that. You never once gave me. See, if it's given, it's not earned. And he was in the place of earning. And he must not have earned enough. Or what he was partaking of is what he had earned. And it was never, he was in a sense eating as he, as he earned. How many of you ever have, a, have a, the end of the month, uh, it seems to be a little bit bigger than, than, than what you have in the bank account. You're kind of like you're eating what you earned. As a young man, maybe you're at school and you have all these ideas of what you want to do and it's this big, but you have to go here and you have to go here and have to go here. So the amount of what you want to do, but the amount of your work time is only this much. And so what ends up happening is, is you're eating your money even before it's spent. You know, this is kind of this. So you, to save up for something big, that just means you're going to have to not eat for a while. This is the way that we live as sons of God in the house of a king Amen. when we're to be drawing from his love. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says this, for we live by faith and not by sight. This is, that's NIV, you've heard it this way. Or you've heard somebody say, or one translation says, we walk by faith and not by sight. Listen to the new living. For we live by believing, not by seeing. We live, we experience life. By believing and not by seeing. Or the, and so here's the thing, just like what we were talking about, mindset. The kind of life we experience is based upon what we believe, not based upon what we see. So uh, we're, co we're coming into these upcoming weeks. Um, uh, starting next week, uh, Landon's going to be ministering uh, this coming Sunday. We're kicking off a series called... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, what is it? joy and peace in believing. Joy and peace in believing. Wow. Kind of, kind of Christmassy, isn't it? There's like joy, because the, but what, there's joy and peace in believing, but listen, there's also death and lack in believing. Did you know that? Kind of Job, let's go Job. The things that I feared the most that I believe the most, they've come upon me. Yep. Kind of kind of some bad stuff in believing. So be, so be careful, little ears, what you 
Oh, be careful, little, what you hear. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Because these right here are gates that go to here. And you can get a mindset. And you can begin to believe. And you can now experience life of hell on earth, even though the conditions are right. Have you ever experienced discontentment when you still had food on the table? And have you ever experienced joy in a Tiny Tim moment? What do I mean by Tiny Tim? You remember Scrooge? You remember Tiny Tim? God bless us, everyone, and they're cutting like a, a quail. Is their Thanksgiving turkey. And there's joy in that home. And there's a t- turkey on the table. You ever been there? You ever had, it felt like you, there wasn't a whole lot of things, but you had everything? But it, it, the same is true. Have you ever had it where it seemed like there was a lot of things, but you just didn't have anything? Because it was joy and peace in believing, or it was, it was lack and despair in believing. Again, the words. The words. Oh, thank you, Lord. Okay, hey, we got a little bit of time. We got about, we got about 20 more minutes. All right? So um, let's go to Galatians chapter 4, and this is a really powerful passage. And we're talking about getting rid of shame. We're talking about getting rid of shame and drawing on love. We're talking about getting rid of what you earn and drawing from a gift. So in Hebrews 4, all of this passage is talking about um, how easy it is for us to have received God's grace and yet somehow try to move back to the place where we work. You know what I'm talking about? Because this is what, and this is that condition that we live in in this world where it's it's easy to get back into the works and and try to I, I'm gonna I'm gonna receive by grace, but I'm also gonna do my best to work under the Lord. Uh-huh. We preach this kind of stuff, or or this is what's heard. It might not be preached because there is a. He's, Paul says, "Show me your faith, and I'll show you my works." Right. In other words, that faith without works is dead. So, but somehow we translate that that, that it's my works that prove that I have faith. But instead of understanding that just my faith produces works but we somehow move back over into this works and so we got to observe uh later middle part of galatians 4 we're not going to read it but he says you're celebrating and observing feasts and holidays and you're trying to make holy moments according to the calendar of the law and all these kind of things you're trying to bring both both can't exist So let me, let me say it this way. You're gonna, if you go read the word, you can go to 1 John, you can go to the Gospels, you can go to multiple places, but to receive the love of God and not demonstrate the love of God, you, you, you're going to find yourself struggling to draw life. I'm going to say that again. To receive the love of God and not let it let it go through you, you're going to kind of become like the Dead Sea. Rich, rich with minerals. Rich. I mean, the Dead Sea, one of the wealthiest places, yet dead. Why? It has no outflow. When the love of God, when you're the end of the love of God instead of the love of God going through you, you will not experience the life that God designed you and I to have. I'm not saying that the sea is not rich, but I am saying it's dead. You can look all the way through. If you you receive my love and you're not going to show love, you better check and see if you actually receive love. Because you can't have both. Let's look here. Galatians chapter 1. What am I saying as long as this? As long as the heir is under age, he's no different from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. Now, I I, I hit on this at the end of last week, and we were going to pick up right here. So here's where we're picking up. We kind of picked up a lot more than that too, but 
But here's where we're picking up. He says that in, in Hebrews, it says this, that anyone who lives on milk is still an infant. Hebrews 5.13. Anyone who lives on milk being still an infant is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. So if you and I aren't acquainted with the teaching on righteousness, here's what he's saying. You're a babe. You are, you are very young in Christ if you think you have to earn your salvation or you think it's based on your works. And this is what happens. Having received, we move into that place of wanting to get it right and we move into this place and we've forgotten the, the teaching on salvation and we stay babes for a long time. And so here, here's what he's saying. It, it, we can be in the house but still have a slave mentality and, and, and we're young, not understanding the righteousness of God, and so we're no different than a slave, even though we're heir of everything. Even though everything is ours, God wants to give us everything, because we still think we got to earn, and it's produced by works, even though I'm 14, 15, 16, 100 years old, whatever, how old I am, it doesn't matter, because my mentality and the way I draw is based on my works, not based on my inheritance. This is a mouthful. I know, but this is what this teaches. It would be good to read Galatians 4 with this understanding. You can't, have, you can't have your works and his grace living together and experience life. If grace and works are living together, well then that's how you're going to receive, but that's also the way that you're going to give the love of God. You're going to give the love of God to somebody else. So in your house is, well, I didn't mean to do that. And I judge myself by my intention, not by what I did. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We're really good judges by our, our own intentions, but we judge everybody else by their actions. But I can't have, I can't have grace and works or, or, or in a son and slave. It doesn't work. Together in the same guy here, in the same being, in you. You can't have in you both this identity as a son and as a slave and draw from the life of God. He says there, he says, those are the same. They differ, no, no, you, you fall back to the slave. He says, you differ, you, nothing, nothing different than a slave, even though you own the whole estate. Let's go to verse 3 here, Galatians 4, 3. So also when we were underage, we were in slavery under the elemental spiritual forces of the world. But when this set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a, a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. Verse 6, because, this is where we just read Romans 8, same thing. It says, because you are his sons, God sent this, uh, the spirit of his son into our hearts, uh, the spirit who calls out Abba, Father. So inside, the Holy Spirit... If you go to John 14 and John 16, he's our helper. And he's going to say some things to us that the Father says. So inside of you, the Father's saying, say it, say it, dada, say it, dada, say it. You, you know when you have a brand new baby? Say it, dada, 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 buck. Actually, that's the first word I got my boy to say, buck. Say it, say it, buck, buck, buck. Touch the buck. But God is on the inside saying, say it, daddy. Say it, daddy. He's wanting you to say, daddy. This is the Holy Spirit's job sent to you and me. Say, sit into our hearts that you and I would cry out, father, daddy, daddy. In other words, my source, my. It's interesting. He doesn't say, he sent him into our hearts to call us father. He keeps it as Daddy, Father, that we would stay in that place of sonship as a child of God, a childlike faith. We're not to graduate from that. Um, and he, verse 7, so you are no longer a slave, but God's child, and since you are a child, he has made you also an heir. What is an heir? An heir doesn't earn. An heir receives. And you were made an heir by Christ. But now that you know God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you are again turning back to those weak things? Weak and miserable forces. Do you wish to be enslaved by them all over again? And that's where I mentioned going back, observing this, observing this. All right, let's go down to verse 21. So tell me, tell me, you who want to be under the law, are you not aware of what the law says? For it is written, Abraham had two sons, one by a slave woman, other by a free woman. 
His son by the slave woman was born according to the flesh, but his son by the free woman was born as a result of divine promise. He's saying, he's, he's bringing this analogy up again. You, you can be in the house and you can be a son and you can be a slave because of a mentality. And he says, do you not remember Abram who had a child? Abram, not Abraham, Abram. Abram had lived in a land that God had promised him for 10 years. He's in there 10 years, and he still hasn't had the child. So God had kept some of his word, but he didn't see God as faithful as keeping all of his word. So Sarah, not Sarah, Sarai said, hey, why don't you take my servant, who was much younger than her, as a servant to Sarai, and said, sleep with Hagar, and see if by her you could have, I could have a child. So guess what happens? Abram says, okay, he's 86 years old at this point. 86, he sleeps with Hagar, and she conceives Ishmael. Wow, a son of the flesh. God, did, They did it apart from God. They did it apart from the word of God. They figured out a way to get it done apart from the Lord. boy, Way to go. You know, we applause. How are your kids doing? Oh, they're doing great. I'm having plenty of Ishmael's. Sometimes we're, you know, how's their walk with the Lord? Ah, oh, we don't talk about that. All right. Thank you, Lord. I don't know how we got onto that. Um, verse 23, his son by the slave woman was born according to the flesh, but the son by the free woman was born as a result of divine promise. So he was 99 years old. So 86, Hagar, Ishmael. 99 years old. God appears to Abram again, and he says, I'm going to give you a son. I told you I'm going to give you a son. And I, my promise and my word hasn't changed. But I had to, we're, we're moved to a place to where it couldn't be by your hand. It had to only be by me. So you're 99. He said, can a man who's 99 years old have pleasure? That just means that there, it, there wasn't blue pills. <laughs> Abraham was dead. 86, there was a glimmer of hope. 99, not even for Abram. And God says, I told you I was going to give you a son. I'm going to keep my word. I always keep my word. I watch over it to perform it. Let me just tell you, he's a promise. He says, this one's by divine promise. And Sarah is 100 years old. Think about this. Or no, no, Abraham was born 100 years old when Abraham was. So here, here he says, uh, I'm going to change your name from Abram to Abraham. And this is the one who's going to be the inheritor. This is the one I'm making my covenant through. Abraham. Not Abram. Abraham. And that, the H, the only way you can pronounce that is, would, be, would have been the, the breath of God. By the spirit of God. Sarah, not Sarai, not Abram. There's no H. All of a sudden we put breath, spirit in both of them. Because it's not by might. But it's not by power, but it is by my spirit. It says that this, is, this is what we have to know, that what we approach tomorrow, we, it's not by the outside. It's not what my hand can provide. It's not what my eyes can see. It's not these ears, but it's a place I can draw from. Amen. And I can have that. Yeah. And he said, cast out. If you go on, we're going to move to the next verses here. But at the latter part, he said, cast out. Cast out the bondwoman. Cast out. Get rid of the works. Let me say it this way. Get rid of the marks. Get rid of the marks. If you want love in your home, if you want love in the house, if you want love at the Thanksgiving, you choose to get rid of the marks. Instead, let, let the love of God choose to pull from the... Yeah, but you don't know what happened. You don't know. Draw from the love of God that has been shed abroad in your heart. And that love of God, let's go here, Psalms 103, 12. Psalms 103, 12. And as far as the east from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. This is the love of God. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions. This is the love with the love of God. It removes Draw from the love of God, and it can remove how deep, how wide, you, to your farthest reach. 
Thank you, Lord. And that verse right there, he says, verse 30 in, in uh, Galatians 4, verse 30, it says, but what does the scripture say? Get rid of the slave woman and her son, for the slave woman will never share. You will never, as much as you want to, as much as you want to try to get God's move, Lord, I did this and I did this, I did this, now you can do this. Our works interrupt our receiving when that's what we are trusting in. What we're, you want God to move? Well, I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I fasted six times and I didn't eat and I didn't even drink water for three days and they say that could kill you. And I, God, you know how desperate I am. You know how? But cast out. Cast out, verse, verse 30. But get rid of the slave woman and her son. For the slave woman, son, will never share in the inheritance with the free woman's son. So you know who your daddy, father? Abraham. Who's your mama? Who's your mom? Sarah. Sarah's my mom. Sarah's my mom. Who's that? The mom of promise. That's where I'm drawn from, promise. Hey, mama, 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 my boys still do this. Dad takes care of the tough things if they need, but mama gets called all the time. Dad is tough, mom is soft. If they want the easy yes, who do they talk to? Mama. What I'm saying is not just the picture of our relationship, but there's a promise. The promise of mom, mama, mom, Sarah, Sarah. Who's, who's, the, who's your mama? Sarah. Promise. Promise. Thank you, Lord. Let's, let's go here. Um, I mentioned... I mentioned uh, Paul talking about how I've been crucified with Christ. That's Galatians 2.20. And so, no, no longer do I live, but Christ lives in me. In the life I now live, in this flesh, I live by faith. And when I say you're not in this flesh, no, you're in this flesh, but how are you living? How are you making your way? By faith. By faith in the Son of God who loved me. What, so what's my faith in? The Son of God who does what? Love me. So where does my faith rest in? Love. The love of God. The love of God. The love of God. I'm, draw, I'm trying to get us, uh, your, my, uh, that we would know how deep, how wide, how great is this love. And to know this love, not a head knowledge, but by intimacy, to, to say, let it in. Like, receive the hug. <laughs> receive God's love. It's like shame. You know, shame, you, God can't take that from you. But the love of God can loosen your grip. And then what can happen is when you hear the love of God, it just, he, you let go of that shame and he lifts that from you. He can't take it from you. If you're going to hold it, you can hold it. But the love of God can loosen the grip on that shame. And you can... Second Corinthians 5.16, this is our closing... Ish. <laughs> we'll hit this real quick. So, no, Second Corinthians five sixteen. These are just great devotionals um, verses that you can look at. So, from now on, we Second Corinthians five sixteen. So, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Although we once regarded regarded Christ this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Can you hear Paul saying that? Can you hear Paul saying that heaven? Then all that he's done, he's saying, if any man's in Christ, he's a new creation. The new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. This is, this is, where, this is where shame stops. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting. Not counting men's trespasses against them. If reconciliation, if 
that's going to happen in a family, if it's going to happen at Thanksgiving, if it's going to happen at work, if it's going to happen, here's where it starts. Not counting. It's too hard. It's too, record could never be made right. Could never. Yes, it can. Jesus made it right. When I made too many wrongs, too many to count, my board, my board was full. But God didn't count those against me. Because of Christ. Otherwise, they're still counted. But he removed those transgressions as far as the east is from the west and reconciled us back to God. And he said, guess what I want to do with you? I want to give you the same ministry of reconciliation to bring people back to the Lord and, listen, to, to see your relationships reconciled. The Bible says you'll know You'll know him by our love for one another. And Matthew tells us this, that there's two commandments upon everything everyone holds. The first one is this, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. Second one's just like it, love your... How do you love? You stop counting. And that which has been counted, you let the love of God erase. How do you let the love of God erase? You draw from the well of the Spirit. Not from the well or the mind set on the flesh. You set your mind on here. And guess what you'll have in that relationship? Life and peace. Shameless. Bring love. Introduce love. Maybe love's been hanging around, but you just haven't said, hey, can I show you love? Introduce love. You know, uh, it happens at get-togethers where someone finally says, well, who's this? And you're like, oh, well, this is my girlfriend. There the whole time. And now, now they're part of the conversation before they were just kind of hiding. I'm going to close with this scripture. Matthew 7, judge not that you not be judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with what measure you use, it will be measured back to you. This is the same principle. Is you can't have the slave woman and the woman, or slave son and the slave, or the promised son in the same house. You cannot. You want to be judged this way, but you're judging this way? You can't. What's going to happen is you're going to go back to the, you're going to be judged that way. And you're going to miss out on the love of God. You're going to miss out on drawing from an inheritance. Though you, though you are an heir, you'll be a slave in the home. Let's not be slaves in a home that we were meant to inherit. Why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye and do not consider the plank in your own? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck in your, your eye and look, there's a plank in your own. You hypocrite. First remove the plank from your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Verse seven. Ask and it will be given unto you. Son, bringing us back to the sonship right here. Ask and it'll be given to, unto you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives. And he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks it'll be opened. Or what man is there among you if his son asks for bread, gives him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, would he give him a snake? If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more does your father give gifts, not wages, gifts to those who ask him. Therefore, whatever you want men to do unto you, do also unto them. God, back to 2 Corinthians 5, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's trespasses 
against them. Reconciliation. Shameless. A well of love. A well of life and peace. A promise for today and to tomorrow. The love of God. Where are we drawn from? Where are we drawn from? Let's stand this morning. Thank you, Lord. We're just going to close our eyes this morning. You receive the love of God. They're going to do business with the Lord. Any place that has, and I want you to see that whiteboard. I want you to see that, or that paper. I want you to see those, those hash marks. We're going, to do, we're going to receive the love of God this morning for us. That's, that's erased and removed, not counted, and, and, and removed transgression as far as the east is from the west. Though it was like scarlet, the Bible says it's white as snow. So, Father, just right now, all of the sins, all of the things, that all were places we missed it. Though it was even just yesterday, though it was just even a, a moment ago. Father, we thank you that there is no condemnation now in Christ. So we just receive We receive your love this morning. We receive, we yield to your spirit that's within us, crying, Father, Father, Father. Thank you for your love, Lord, that while we were yet sinners, you loved us and sent your son Jesus for us. So thank you that your love has been shed abroad in our heart that that's fills us. Your love fills us. Just say, thank you, Father, for filling me with your love that I could draw from your love. And right now, I thank you, Father, the same way that you forgave us, the same way that you removed our marks. We draw on that love. to not count men's trespasses against us. To not count our moms. To not count our fathers. To not count our friends. Father, thank you for that removal as we draw from your love. Thank you that our mind would be set. That we no longer have to tell ourselves it's going to be all right. But we believe and we draw from a new slate. Father, thank you for making all things new. Thank you for making all things new. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for making things new. Clean slate, that's what I heard. Like a clean slate. Fresh relationships. A hug without the hiding. Father, thank you for that today. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. Well, we're going to dismiss. Um, if I could have my altar care uh, team come forward uh, as we dismiss this morning, um, and they're all going to come over here. Something we've been doing, uh, we used to do it all the time, and we've been get, got it back. We've had some really cool testimonies of people praying. Um, if you have never been born again, if you want to give your life to Jesus, I want you to come up here afterwards, and I want you to pray with them to receive Christ. Um, Sometimes we do it like this and then trying to hurry up and personal and all that. Sometimes there's anointing on it, but there's an anointing on it. But today, if that's you, I want you to come up here and just have some personal, not just a prayer, but a step forward. Amen. And then also, if you need healing in your bodies, there's a prayer of agreement. You know, you could pray with, uh, agree with someone right next to you, or you can come up here. But don't leave when you have a need without first giving it to the Lord or coming together. If two agree on earth, it's touching anything. It shall be done. Amen.
Amen. Other than that, we will see you next Sunday. God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving. We love you. Thank you for joining us. We hope you were strengthened and encouraged by the Word of God. If you need prayer, feel free to text us at the number on the screen below. You can also send us an email to info at beyondchurch.org or submit a prayer request form on our website at beyondchurch.org. If you'd like to partner with us in preaching Jesus, you can give securely online through our app or website, or if you prefer to mail your gift, send it to the address shown below. Stay connected with us throughout the week. You can download the app for all of our latest messages and announcements, and be sure and follow us on our socials at Beyond Church. If you've never attended in person, we highly encourage you to plan a visit. You'll never regret prioritizing godly community. We love you and hope to see you soon.